Hey, this is Alpha. I'm super excited to give you the rundown on Google's latest Gemini 2.0 release. Now, if you haven't seen my previous video, I previously covered the 2.0 announcement back in December. That's eight weeks ago. This release as of yesterday is the general availability and as, as well as preview by the Google team that allows developers and brands to use these models. Finally, the wait is over. This is a significant announcement by Google and we're going to see uh, a very uh, impactful release here because these models are not only very affordable, they're very fast and they're very performant. The trifecta by Google is here. So looking at the release, we have uh, three models being released. 2.0 flashlight, it's in public preview. 2.0 flash general availability, this is the one that a lot of developers have been waiting for, including myself. And we've got Gemini 2.0 Pro, which is an advanced version of 2.0. And of course, the bolt here represents a milestone that is of performance. The most performance model are in this darker black. And of course, across the board, uh, we do see very good performance on the Pro release as expected. Because when you put the name Pro, you're going pro. Here we go. We've got the next announcement here um, by Google on their blog describing multimodality and what's coming down the pipeline. Uh, these images, uh, these models rather, can digest images as inputs. They can digest audio, PDFs, and I'll cover that, uh, put a sticky note on that, and you'll see uh, what I mean for, for that later. They can generate text, no problem. Image modality, audio outputs are all coming except for the 2.0 light version. That makes sense. This is uh, sort of the equivalent of a distilled release. And of course, a massive co token context window. So between one and two million tokens, you know, you can throw in many, many books into these models and they will handle it like butter. We've got structured outputs being supported by these models, function calling, incredible. You also see something quite unique by Google, search as a tool. You know, Google is able to do essential Google uh, search verification. This is additional workflows that they're implementing into two of their models. Incredible release here. And we've got code execution, which we've also seen by other providers. Looking through the pricing here is the best part. We've got incredibly affordable pricing, as good as DeepSeek Chat, DeepSeek R1, but even better in many circumstances. Uh, looking at some of the announcements and the feedback from the industry. We've got Jerry here from the Llama team. Uh, he's describing, Llama Cloud team rather, uh, he's describing that you know these models, including 2.0 uh, released, is not only good for parsing tasks where you're throwing all the, the tokens inside the context window, but also very good at downstream workflows, including extraction, indexing, and report generation. And of course, um, this is something that the Llama um, cloud provides. Um, this is a, a, a solution provided by the Llama index offering that Jerry has created. A couple of things that I'll mention here that are quite impactful on Hacker News, we see uh, individuals who are claiming that they are, have been able to reduce their um, pipelines from 12 minutes of processing documents to six seconds on average with an accuracy of 96%. That is incredible. So cheaper and dramatically faster. We've got Sergey here who is essentially explaining the true power of the 2.0 release, including the ability to um, digest very large documents with near perfect object character recognition, OCR accuracy. The 2.0 release flash version is the one that I need you to focus on. We've got 6,000 pages um, being able to be processed uh, for, as a PDF to Markdown, and that only costs $1. I'm gonna repeat this. You can process a PDF of up to 6,000 pages, and it will cost you $1. That is incredible. This um, expense, of course, um, does come at a uh, accuracy uh, drop-off, 
but not much. So we can see that Gemini is near perfect in its accuracy. And so, yes, um, this model is not only cheap, but it's also very performant. Looking at the leaderboards, we do see the Gemini um, Dash 2.0 release topping all charts on the top here. We've got across all categories, including math, coding, uh, English, and many others. We've got conversational abilities being sort of hitting number one ranks for the flash thinking model, which I can also dive into as well. There's the pro model and there's the flash model. So this is the equivalent of R1, pro and flash is the equivalent of deep seek chat. And of course, we've got other leaderboards, including the web dev arena, which allows you to focus on how good are these models to solve open source uh, coding projects. And we've got Gemini as well, Gemini, also hitting the top charts, as you can see, very powerful um, arena scores uh, coming in through these models. And now I wanna take a, a brief moment and focus on something that uh, you uh, perhaps have been curious, you know, how do they look like in agentic workflows? So here I wanna show you a uh, workflow that I built right before this, where I show you that it's possible to uh, create a, an agentic team, a customer support agentic team that is powered by Gemini agents. And, and this is something that I've built and I'll run in a second, but before I do, I wanna show you this graph. So this is a, a graph showing how this agentic team works. We've got a customer asking for a refund perhaps. We've got um, the agent kicking in, and in this case, powered by a deep seek um, model. And it's essentially doing one of two things. It's looking at, hey, is this customer request related to a ticket? Is it related to perhaps something that uh, the agent knows? And in that case, it gathers a reply uh, based on what the user uh, prompts. And of course, it is aiming to resolve that customer support ticket. So it's asking for confirmation of the ticket closure. And once it's done, it ideally, it even asked for feedback. So this is, I uh, wanted to show you a circumstance where if there's no uh, resolution, you know, we're gonna stop the workflow and, and the graph execution. But if there is feedback, um, if there is a complete resolution of the ticket, we can ask immediately for feedback. Just to show you that you know these uh, workflows and these graphs um, can be uh, quite um, advanced and nuanced. So here, now I wanna pause for a second and jump into my code. Okay, so we are now running this customer support team as a uh, graph built with Pydantic AI. Here, the customer is asking for a refund. And of course they speak Italian, so they're gonna say pronto. And as soon as they hit enter, we have the first agent kicking in. This is powered by Gemini. I wanna just briefly touch on what you see here. So the agent is calling a tool for knowledge based search and they're trying to see the agent calls a tool for knowledge based search and it's looking for uh, the query to see if there's something that can come back from that search we've got the result of that agent execution the data that is coming back is uh, that it needs to essentially process the refund and of course it um, doesn't have a knowledge base at this point. So what we're doing here is we're essentially creating a synthetic response, but you know, if you have customer data, whether that's in a traditional database or a vector database, you know, we can pull this in uh, through a traditional RAG pipeline. Uh, and in this case, the tool is simply reflecting on that we have a synthetic response, meaning no real data. Once the model has made that request, and it's looking for that specific query, it recognizes that in order to perform that search, it needs to um, not include all the keywords. So we go from, I want a refund pronto to just a refund. 
the model is deciding the best search query to perform on users behalf to be able to pull that up so here we have the um, model requesting that that search um, index and it's coming back basically saying that i want a base result a knowledge base result for that query and we do have the response here so what we see here is that agent was able to generate the response the agent has guidelines on um, how to respond so in this case the user is asking for a refund um, the agent understands that it should be empathetic in its response it um, has an example of what that looks like and of course it has the contextual awareness of the knowledge base so as that data that is grounded uh, come back through the result so here we have agent responding and it's essentially mimicking the example we gave it and it's able to basically say that uh, hey i found some helpful information from a knowledge base that explained our refund policy of course if we had actual user data here we would uh, pull that up as well and at the end we do have that final response here and we do have a question uh, which is that feedback at the end that i have mentioned whether or not this is resolved or not so if we say yes we're now going to expect the agent to recognize that it's a diversion um, there's a route happening and it's going to ask us for feedback the case has been resolved any feedback for us leave a comment as we read each one i love it thanks i appreciate it and so as soon as i hit enter we now have the graph ending because to recognize that um, the resolution is made and the feedback has been collected we do see and are able to capture that and of course um, the example i gave you here is the graph that we have been able to execute upon so if you like what you see here if you want to see more breakdowns like this i'm happy to create more content whether it's related to agentic workflows or ai agents if you haven't already subscribe hit the like hit the sub button and i'll see you next time